Shabbat Shalom, everybody. This is uh, Rabbi Stephen, Rav Shmuel, and I like the acronym Rashbi. So before we start, I just want to show you, Yarmulke. <laughs> okay, uh, first of all, uh, I want to thank everybody who's been participating in the services. We have people reading Hebrew, people reading English, it's really just people reading Spanish. It's, it's really kind of a very diverse community, and I'm proud of all of you. And, uh, the way you pitch in and the way you attend and uh, participating. We have people that are uh, wanting to read the Torah. I should probably put myself on that uh, roster as well to read a Torah portion one of these years, huh? Okay. So uh, just uh, coming up a few things. First of all, um, I typically record these on Sunday. Uh, I typically like to do it while it's fresh in my mind after studying this week's Torah portion. And I release this on Tuesday. The point of it is, is that Purim is a little more than a week away once you see this. Uh, it's going to be uh, in a couple of weeks. We just had the uh, new month for Rosh Chodesh, Rosh Chodesh, which is a new month for Adar. And it's uh, two weeks away. So on uh, Thursday, it's the last Thursday of the month. We're going to be having a Megillah reading. I know it's virtual. We're all going to be on, on Zoom. But uh, feel free to indulge. We'll wear some costumes. You make your own groggers, or maybe you have your own groggers, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So, also, uh, we're proud to announce that we're going to be offering the Miller course, Introduction to Judaism. Now, this is a course that a lot of people who are considering conversion take. Uh, they would do that. They would go through the Beit Din, which is the court of three up in the American Jewish University up in LA. And then they go through the mikvah, and if it's a male, there'd be some type of uh, circumcision thing. We can talk about that later. And uh, then, then you become Jewish. And this is one of the ways that you decide. It's kind of like a, a final way of deciding, you know, is Judaism really for me? I personally think it is, but as you know, I'm pretty subjective. It's also for folks that uh, maybe didn't have an extensive Jewish uh, learning a Jewish educa Hebrew education when they were growing up, or maybe they just want a refresher. So stay tuned. We'll announce the details as we come up. So, and we're very proud to offer it. It's going to uh, really make be a, a good thing that our synagogue is doing this. You know, we want to be all things for all folks. We want to really be a full service synagogue, and this is one way to do it. So stay tuned. Purim, uh, I'm getting uh, a little bit of feedback here, folks. Uh, Purim is the last Thursday of February. So uh, that is a week from this Thursday. We just had the first day of Adar, and Purim is on the 14th of uh, the month of Adar. So that would be two weeks from this previous weekend, which we had Rosh Chodesh. Okay. So now that we've cleared that up, let's talk about this week's portion, Teruma. So years ago, I had the honor and the privilege of spending a summer at Camp Ramah. This is when I was young uh, in New York. I grew up in New York, and this was upstate. And we had classes every day. We had classes in Hebrew, and we had classes in Torah. And the Torah the book of the Torah that we were uh, studying, and it was, you know, the first of the program. So it was the first book. It was Genesis. And one of the kids, we were talking, uh, and he made a remark that, gee, isn't it great that we're doing Genesis, where all the fun, all the ex interesting stories are, as opposed to kids that would come a couple of years later, and they'd either do Exodus or Leviticus, and it gets kind of dull. With that, this, uh, it, 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 the Torah starts to get a little less exciting. This particular portion, Teruma, is very technical. It talks about the uh, accoutrements, the, uh, the, the, the furniture that's going to be in the Mishkan, that's the tabernacle out in the wilderness, and also the tabernacle itself. It's basically kind of like a Home Depot. It's instructions for building the Mishkan. Mishkan meaning, the, again, the tabernacle. It was Mishkan from the word Shochem, Mishachem. Shochem means to dwell, uh, like we have on Saturday morning, Shochem Ad, uh, dwelling. The Kabbalah, the Zohar, focuses on the Shochem which is God's spirit, God's presence, the Holy Spirit. 
So Mishkan is where Hashem would dwell. Now, let's talk a little bit about this. First of all, Teruma. The word Teruma is one of those Hebrew concept words that really doesn't have an English equivalent. And Dr. Hertz in the Sancino kind of makes that point that Teruma really translates the equivalent is portion. And what people would do, it starts out saying, for those Israelites who in their heart want to give a portion of their goods for the building of the Mishkan. Teruma is also something that refers to the tithe that the Israelites would give to the priests. On that note, let's uh, look at a little trivia. The word challah, right? We say, a, we say a blessing for challah Friday night, and it means bread. And people say, well, wait a minute. Hamotzi lechem in our arms. For the bread, for the bread that comes from the ground, what is challah? Challah was the grain portion that was given to the priests as an offering. That's what challah is. And challah is therefore a teruma. So, we have this portion, everybody's giving a portion for the building of the Mishkan and all the things that would go into it. So it talks about the Ark, which is kind of like a big box uh, that was wood, layered of gold, and then a layer of wood, and then a layer of gold, and you had this fancy design around the top. And this is where the uh, Ark of the Covenant, where the Ten Commandments would go and where it would be. It had staves, these poles on the side. They also had an altar, and this was a sacrificial altar. There were two altars in the Mishkan. The sacrificial altar, if somebody wanted to do a, 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 an ola, which is a, a, an offering that goes up, um, a, a rising offering, ola means to go up, or if somebody wanted a shalamim, which was a peace offering, or a chatat, which is a sin offering, all these offerings would be done with the, the altar had a ramp. Now, it didn't have stairs because, remember, in those days, the priests wore robes, and modesty was the word of the day. So this way, they could kind of walk up the ramp without exposing anything, okay? Uh, it also talks about the labor, which is the bowl, that uh, the big wash bowl that, that the priests would wash their hands in. It talks about the menorah, uh, and it was a big menorah, and the story goes that that God tried to explain it to Moses. He didn't quite get it. So it talks about instead of ose, which means made, ma'ase, would be made. So basically, as Moses started struggling with hammering out this one piece of gold that would be molded into the form of the menorah, and this was a seven stem menorah. You had one in the middle, you had three on the end, and kind of the, the, uh, the uh, stems would kind of be pushed in a little bit going to the middle which was, you know, represented Torah. And it was a big menorah. Um, and he threw it in the fire, started hammering it out, and out came the menorah. God had it, had it made for him. That's, you know, hence the word. It also had the table, which again was overlaid with gold. And on the table was this rack. It would look like kind of a baker's rack. And the baker's rack had places on two sides, six sides for each rack, and the rack is what held the, the showbread. And the showbread is what the priest would bake. And it would be on there for a week. Friday, they would eat the bread and new bread would come. And, you know, the art scroll talks about how the bread miraculously stayed fresh throughout that week in enough time for the, for the uh, priests to eat it. So they also talked about the inner sanctum, which is the Holy of Holies, which is where only the high priest would go on Yom Kippur to make atonement. There was an altar in there too. Now, outside of the Mishkan, you had these planks. It's really kind of a very innovative type of design where you had planks and they had these little poles, um, these little little stems on, on the top and the bottom, and you had this uh, nub that would go on and hold the two, the two um, Let's see if we can do it this way. That if you had two poles, it would kind of go on and hold it together. You had a little thing on the bottom. And then you had these rings <coughs> on the top of the plank and the bottom of the plank, and the, the poles would go in there. Also, the planks were wide enough so they could drill a hole, and a pole would go in there too. And this was all portable. It was like a mash unit. Remember MASH, Mobile Army Surgical Hospital? 
The doctors would take it around. They'd move it as they needed it during wartime. This is the Mishka. So with the minute we have left, let me, now that I've talked a little bit about what it was, why did we need all those things to worship Hashem? And what about the confusion that we would actually start to worship the things rather than God? Because the Israelites had been in Egypt for 400 years. They've been slaves for 129, but they've been in Egypt, they've been in exile, and they've been exposed to idolatry. So now they needed a way to kind of wean themselves off of gods and just kind of start to recognize the one God, Hashem, that they would, and this is the way we offered it. Some people say that the sacrifices that we did were, you know, they were kind of barbaric, but this is what the ancient pagans did. They'd sacrifice to, you know, the moon, the stars, whatever. And the Israelites needed a way to just kind of sacrifice to Hashem. Okay, so that's our uh, portion for the week. Uh, again, we will see you for forum in a, uh, about a week or so from when this comes out. And um, look forward to talking. Look forward to seeing you in services. Thanks for listening.